Welcome back to the channel. We all use software as a service every day, even if we are not aware about it. So every time you use email or watch Netflix or use Google Drive or Google Docs, you are using software as a service. In the video today, I will explain in a very simple way what is the meaning of software as a service with examples that we use every day. So there is no need for any IT experience. Let's break down the term software as a service. The word software is something we all know. This is the application that we get and install on our device and then use it. This can be on our PC, on our smartphone or any other device. Now what about the second part, service? The definition of service can vary. So let's take a very simple example from our daily life, the phone service that we use to make and receive phone calls and send and receive text messages. We have to continuously pay for the phone service to use it. So either we pay per use, so whenever we make a phone call or send a message, we pay a small fee or we pay a monthly subscription. And if we stop paying, we stop receiving the service. We also don't own any of the infrastructure needed to make the phone calls, like the communication towers. We don't even have to understand how they work. These are owned and managed by the service provider. As phone service users, we don't need any technical knowledge on how the phone service works. All we need to do is to learn how to make and receive phone calls which is very easy to learn and anyone can do it. We are also not responsible for any technical issues that happen in the phone service. So if there is no network, for example, it will be handled by the service provider. And if there are new inventions or features that can improve the network signal, for example, as phone service users, we don't have to do anything. These features will be implemented by the service provider and will be applied to all the users automatically. So these are some of the main aspects of service that apply to our video today. First is continuous payment. The users always have to pay to receive the service. Second is no infrastructure ownership. The service users, they don't own the infrastructure and they don't have to understand how it operates. Third is no need for technical knowledge. The service users only need to understand how to make and receive phone calls, which is very easy to learn, but they don't need to understand anything about how the phone service actually works. Also, they are not responsible for solving any technical issues. The fourth aspect is no effort is needed to update or upgrade. The service users, they don't have to do anything to receive new updates or upgrades. These are applied automatically by the service provider to all the users. So how does the term service apply to software? So we get software as a service. Remember in the old days when we wanted to use Microsoft Office 2010, for example, first we had to pay around 150 USD in advance to buy the CD or DVD that had Office on it and then use it to install Office on only one device. So the software installation was our responsibility as software users. And if we face any technical issues, we had to look in online forums for solutions. Also, we didn't have the right to upgrade to the newer Office version. So for example, to upgrade to Office 2013, we had to buy a new license. And this is the traditional model of buying a software that was available before software as a service and is still available until today. So the summary is, we have to make one big payment upfront to use the software. We need some technical knowledge to install the software and handle any technical issues. We don't have the right to upgrade to newer versions and we can use it only on one device. Let's compare this to how most of us use Microsoft Office today. We use Office 365 and this is the software as a service version from Microsoft Office. First, we don't have to make any big upfront payments to buy the software but instead we have to continuously pay a subscription, either monthly or annual. Second, we don't need any technical knowledge to install Office or handle any technical issues because we are continuously connected to Microsoft and their support team will handle everything. So all we need to do to start using the software is to log into the Microsoft website, pay the subscription, download the needed resources, and we are good to go. We can start using the software immediately. Also, as users, we don't have to worry about any upgrades or new features because they will be applied to us automatically once available. For example, all the new features created by Microsoft that are related to artificial intelligence are already available to anyone who is using Office 365. And we can use our account on multiple devices, not only one device as in the traditional model. So for example, I can log into my Microsoft account on my smartphone and on my laptop and get access to Microsoft Office in both of them. Microsoft Office 365 is just one example that we use every day. But there are also many other examples. So Uber, Netflix, Zoom, Dropbox, they are all software as a service. So I hope now you understand clearly what is the meaning of software as a service from the point of view of the service user. There are many other details on the side of the service provider that are not related to our video today. 
And by the way, even today we can still buy Microsoft Office 2021 in the traditional model. So we make one payment of 149 USD and then we get access to Microsoft Office 2021 for a lifetime, but we can only use it on one device. We don't get any upgrades or new features and so on. So as a service user, how does software as a service change my life? So first of all, I don't have to make any big payments anymore. And this is a good thing. So before in order to buy Microsoft Office, I had to think a lot because I needed 150 USD as one payment in order to get the software. So now it's easier for me to start using any software, but also at the same time, I'm continuously paying for the service. But this is okay because seven USD per month for the Office 365 subscription is not a big amount compared to having to pay one time 150 USD. Also, I get all the new features. So now whenever I look on YouTube on a new feature on Excel, for example, and I find someone who created a video in 2023 explaining how to use artificial intelligence in Microsoft Excel, and I go to my own account on Microsoft Excel, I see the same features that he showed on YouTube, which is a great thing because before, whenever I looked for a new feature and then I go to my, uh, my own version of Microsoft Office, most of the time I couldn't find the last features. Now everything is synchronized. It has also been a long time since I went into an online forum looking for a solution to an error that I faced in a Microsoft Office application. There is no technical struggle anymore. So things are very smooth now. And the same for me applies to Adobe. So I use Adobe Premiere, Adobe Audition, Photoshop, and the different Adobe applications to edit the videos for this channel. And it is good for me that I have to pay only one annual subscription to get access to all the new features, which means that I already, for example, have access to all the artificial intelligence features. So I can use Adobe to create images from text and so on. And this has been applied to me automatically. I didn't have to worry about upgrading or looking for new features. But again, I have to continuously pay every year, which is fine since I use Adobe to generate income from this channel. So it is okay for me to pay annually instead of making one big upfront payment and being disconnected from all the new features and updates. So for me as a software user, I'm very happy with software as a service. It is also very good for the software providers. So it is a win-win situation. Software as a service is one of the three components of cloud computing. Infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. If you find this video interesting, let me know and I will make other videos explaining the other two components. I hope you found this video interesting and useful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and to check the other videos. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your time. And I'll see you again soon.